Material for the Brain Conversations for Thinking Bodies Hello and welcome to the 23rd episode of Material for the Brain podcast. My guest for today is Daphna Horenchik, a performer, a choreographer and a good friend of mine. I invited Daphna to the podcast to talk about her latest choreographic project, Diorama Stories, which had its premiere in 2020 and examines the relationship between the production of images and the embodied experience of the process. And her current choreographic research, Rehearsal of Birthing and Dying, in which she's developing a physical practice to explore the consciousness of extreme states of existence. Daphna is a very honest and real person who is willing to share not only the beautiful and inspiring side of her, but also the ugly and unattractive aspect of her being. And for me, this realness is very inspiring. I hope you will enjoy this conversation and looking forward to hearing you in the comment section. Hey, Daphna, how are you? Hey, Matan, I'm fine. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm super happy to see you. What's up? Uh, you know, parenthood is... Uh... <laughs> Is breaking me, but yeah, but I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, already had the wish to have you here for a long time, and I'm happy that we finally can make it. So, um, yeah, maybe just. Uh, I mean, we see each other also here in Vienna, but I'm still curious. Like, what what uh, what is going on with you nowadays? How are you handling life, situations, work? What what are you busy with? Um, Maybe you can uh, give me kind of a brief update to to your life. Yeah, well, um, I was quite busy for a while with uh, touring. Um, in a, I'm, I'm dancing in a piece from uh, Amanda Pina. It's called Danza y Frontera. And we have quite, um, quite a lot of tours in Europe. Uh, now I'm back in Vienna for a while and I'm busy with my own creation. Um, yeah, but mostly I'm busy with the, how do you call it, domestication? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you, what do you mean? Um, with with the everyday life. Family, home, parenthood. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, you know, I think there is something in our profession that is like, uh, um, it's based on like peak moments, you know, like these kind of stage, big moments. And like, sometimes I envy my father that also his profession is very like, you know, just observe little details. So it, it's not such a difference between the domestication, as you call it, to... No, do you find it challenging, like to just find the, I don't know, the pleasure or the the satisfaction with like the routine, or like how is it for you? I'm I'm trying to look for the routine. Uh, routine is something that I didn't have since. Wow, I don't know how many years, at least ten years. So. Yeah, when when I gave birth to. My daughter, uh, so almost a year and a half now, I was uh, reading a lot and constantly um, hearing and reading about making a routine, making a sleeping routine and making a feeding routine and routine here and routine there and to frame the baby. But I, I couldn't understand how this can work on something that is so, like a baby, so uh, unorganized material. Um, and as, my, as I don't have a routine, I couldn't create a routine for her. And now she finally goes to kindergarten and she has a kind of routine. And 
I'm lost <laughs> in her routine. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with that. So, yeah, I'm not. I I think I'm not a systematic person, and I was I was kind of uh, happy with the. Uh, going against it against the routine with with and growing my daughter th this way but uh, yeah now it's not working so much anymore mm. we'll see yeah interesting yeah i don't know for me it's such a calming aspect of life you know like the kind of like predictability so no totally i thought totally, yeah i totally identify with that i just can't find it you know i can't find myself dealing with that maybe every time i i when when i frame myself in in a routine or in definition or whatever i I'm, i'm trying to break it or to contradict it immediately so mm. yeah but that's a part of my personality and yeah, maybe that's also why you are uh, you have such a maybe authentic connection to creativity you know like i mean you're you're definitely my favorite choreographer oh. and, I, <laughs> and i remember from the days we we studied together in dance in the in the dance education academy and, and just kind of witnessing from the outside your process i you know like i think like that certain people they are really creative in inventing things that don't exist yet To some degree, of course, everything is a reference of a reference of a reference, but still like I see like in you the ability to to like bring genuine ideas to the forefront. I'm much more good in like being creative with what already exists and like shuffling things, but so maybe that's also part of it, like you know like the the the, the difficulties to sustain a routine is like the urge always to novelty to something new, you know I don't know yeah, but you know i i'm i bumped into recently recently the terms of um, singularity in relation to to artistic uh, path that you have to have a, a like um, a red thread uh, that is very readable you know that is very defined and um, i was told that um I don't have that so so much. I mean, of course, I can see the red thread that is following me in my artistic uh, development, but uh, from outside, maybe it seems too random or too chaotic. I don't know. And um, and I feel that it's I don't know how I got it, how I got there, but I feel. That this is a generational thing that the the next generation the what is it z generation z yeah I think so uh, actually, yeah probably yeah maybe the <laughs> post millennials sure. I think they're called yeah. I don't know I'm bad with the definition they are so busy with um making themselves so precise. In each moment of their lives to identi uh, identify with that or identify with that um, that this singular singularity cannot exist because we are such a mixture of so many things that every time uh, I don't know a new face of yourself is more dominant. And then you have to go with that and, and do you think like have you been hearing this kind of as a artistic feedback of of or more like a you know like a career motivational speech no it was a... because i want i wonder if like if artistically if it if it actually matters to have this you know like thread like as you said like this red thread or more as like a reaction to this kind of uh market of dance that you want to generate some predictability for future for curator to that the curator need to take less risk to fund you because they kind of know what they are funding and i don't know if it's what what is the if, 
you know. Yes. On the artistic level, I can question it. Maybe on a career decisions, maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I think it was uh, told to me uh, from more from the marketing aspect. Like, I don't know what, uh, what box you... Uh, you're, you're suitable in, you know? Mm. So, yeah, me neither. But why do I have to fit in a box? Why can't my art just be experienced as it is? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think like, you know, categorization to some extent in, is ined- inevitable. Like, you know, like, um, yeah, I mean, we are communicating with words and like there there is a gap i think between the process of making art and expressing expression and the act of receiving art and like listening to the art and 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 there's also the middleman which is the curator the theater and yeah and uh, yeah it's it's pretty difficult to move out of this trap i guess unless you do it just for yourself i you know i, I mean i've i've seen people who are doing art where they are not really interested in the exposure and then it's like you really have the freedom to to go through whatever you want but i think we are like in a different position yeah no i i totally need the encounter with the audience yeah. mm-hmm. Daphna, before 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 i uh, go into kind of developing some of the theme that i'm interested in to talk to you i wanted just to give you some time to share with our audience who are listening now to just kind of give them a brief history uh, of uh, who, like who you are what you do what what is your like background mm. well i um uh, i grew up in uh, tel aviv um i was uh, always interested in uh, being on stage but yeah i i i was trying different things i tried singing i tried a bit of acting and uh, i got into dance in a very not <laughs> not inspirational uh, way um um i think it was in the 8th grade that um me and some friends we decided that we don't want to go to the gym like the other girls but uh, we know ballerinas have uh, nice bodies so we want to study ballet <laughs> and yeah and then um that's how i started dancing and then what really drove me into that was uh, uh watching um performance from Bacheva dance company uh, i was so touched and i said to myself i want to do that i want to touch people this way um yeah then i went to um dance department in the, in the art high school in tel aviv and uh, after high school i did this one year of uh, national service and then i did what did you do in this year well um, i was in the scouts and we were a commune that uh, we tried to create a method of uh, education through art that is aligned with the values of the scouts of the israeli scouts okay. uh, in the periphery i didn't i didn't know that about you yeah it was not so successful it was quite a fail <laughs> i think now this um this how do you call this like a program or the next commune they managed to develop something but uh, we were pioneers in this and uh, we 
we encountered lots of uh, doors slamming in our faces. Um, and that year I was also, um, I was very depressed and therefore I decided not to go to the army. Uh, or the army decided for me <laughs> more than I decided that I will not go to the army. And the year after, I went to um, study in the kibbutz Gaton, where the kibbutz dance company is in their training program for two years. <clears throat> and after that, I moved back to Tel Aviv for one year, and then I, uh, I was accepted to the uh, to seed to Salzburg Experimental Academy of Dance. Um, I did three years there. I didn't graduate. I quit. Um, or it was a mutual decision, uh, as I said before. Right, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolution then. The army, it was one-sided in the academy already. No, the, the army, I, I, <laughs> I think it's a... It was also a, a mutual it's a pattern. Decision. It's a pattern that I have that I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. And then, yeah, but it's clear for both sides that it's not the right place <laughs> for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, um, I took a lot from these studies, but I think it was the, the right decision to quit, even though I still dream about it sometimes that I go back to finish my studies. Um, yeah, and after that, I was very motivated to create my own work. I went back to Tel Aviv. I did that for three years. I was also um, performing and I started teaching contemporary dance and um, I, I found my, myself, like my teaching self. And in 2015, end of 2015, I had another big uh, crisis with dancing and depression and what what is the meaning of all this and in that time we me and my partner we just moved to munich that was not um, helping my situation so um we were there for two years yeah and then i moved we moved uh, to vienna and then things started to work out for me, I think, more in many ways, um, professionally, uh, personally, which are for me kind of intertwined. I cannot really uh, disconnect the professional from the personal. Um, Yeah, and now I'm I'm also a mother. That's new. And and within your uh, within the as you said, like it's hard for you to separate the personal and the professional. Is there anything that you identify more more within the professional world? Do you see yourself more as a choreographer, as a performer, as a teacher? Is there any like like primary? I primary identity or it's like for you really feeding one another and not possible to separate them? Um, for many years, it was very hard for me to identify as a performer or as a dancer. And I think it's a lot, it has a lot to do with the, with the education, with the feedback I got, with the disbelief uh of of my teachers in me uh so i i was always i had to 
connect more to the creator part or to identify as a creator because yeah it was very hard for me to see myself as a dancer and then there were moments that I was only dancing for others and I was going from one project to the next and so I did touch this um, the glory of being a performer and now I realize that um, that I have to do all three to feed one another. And it's not, a, it's not about identification, it's really about um, being able to do the craft properly or to, to keep myself interested. Hmm. So what is, what is it for you there? on stage performing because you said like as uh, when you were young like you know watching a performance kind of mo- drove you into dance but creating and performing is different so so like now you had a tour and you've been a lot on stage what is it for you there what are you looking for like what what attracts you to this experience of being watched by others um What I wish to myself and to the dancers I work with when I'm creating is to be able to lose yourself, lose myself uh, in the time of the performance on stage. By losing myself, I mean to commit totally to the fact that you are now channeling something that is bigger than you, than yourself, than myself. Um, And meeting yourself anew. I mean, finding things that you don't know about yourself. And by doing that, you let the, the person who's watching you or the people who are watching you find new things about themselves that they didn't know. That's what Sounds I Sounds therapeutic. But it's, um, it's mutual. It's not a, a therapy for me. It's a mutual therapy in a way, but it doesn't have to be only on, on the therapeutic level. It can be No, I mean, for sure yeah. it's not like a therapy, but it sounds for me like when you just said these words, like, uh, you know, like uh, to go and to, to connect that um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something which is like bigger than myself, which is in a way for me, like, you know, uh, kind of letting go of attachment to my, maybe my immediate needs and like co- connect to something bigger and, and then meet myself on levels that maybe I don't know about myself. It sounds like that it, it has some therapeutic aspect. That's what I mean. Like, uh, for sure, like going to a therapy is a very different thing. But... Okay, but a politician, when they go to politics, let's say on a very pure level of this definition without corruption and ego, and let's put that aside. A politician, when they, when, when they go, he or she go, goes to politics, it's to be able to do something that is bigger than the self also, no? Yeah, I mean, I mean actually, that, you know, it leads me to kind of the, the next question that I'm, that I'm interested in because I think that there is a very thin line, you know, between narcissism and, and, and transcending the self, no? Like, as you said, like when I go to do, when I, when I, maybe if I run to be the president of Vienna, Maybe I'm there because I want to implement what I think that is the best. So, you know, just like I want to cement my ideology in the world, which is something that maybe is really like the ultimate narcissism. But it also can be on stage, you know, and, and I, mean, I mean, we've both seen performances like this or, share, or shared moment or been in those moments that you're on stage and, and you're more celebrating yourself, enjoying the, the energy that you receive from the outside rather than really transcending anything from your being into others. And, and I wonder because like, 
I know that you're like, at least uh, from my experience of watching you work, I know that you're, you are not just saying it, you have also like tools for yourself. And I'm curious, like what helps you to actually tap into that mindset and not go into this down spiral of narcissism? Uh, I think it's a practice that I have since some years in my everyday life. So it has, it's not specific to stage. And stage does not enhance my narcissism or vice versa. Um, my tools, I think the process I've been, I've been through around this topic uh, has to do with the three events or three aspects. One is my encounter with the psychedelics and plants that had a huge impact on the person that I am today. Um, the second would be um, one, um, one piece I, I performed in or uh, a process, a project I participated in uh, in Israel uh, with the choreographer Ariel Cohen and there was a I can talk about this process a lot and but I think one thing that really changed my perspective on on performing is that he said um, celebrate the failure that you are and this is something that really, really uh, go with me. Um, I think it really allows acceptance or um, it's, it's, um, it takes away toxic ambition. Mm. And uh, I had a third thing, third, yeah. Third thing is a, a mindfulness and meditation that I, um, I practiced for a while very intensively. And even though I don't practice it so regularly now, I, I feel like it's, it's uh, already imprinted in, in my body somehow. Mm. So it sounds for me a bit more like, like that, you know, like, to say that performance could be the process of liberating yourself from your ego is a bit like reverse engineering the process. It sounds more like, okay, you do things in life, in your personality that helps you to, uh, to maybe disidentify with, with the self and then you can apply it on stage. Even though I'm curious because you also said that there was a performance project that also helped. Would you agree with it or you think it's like mutual? Is it more like, okay, you have to work on your personality elsewhere and then maybe you can do it on stage or you think that it really, there is an invitation there or like through the process to do this work. I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm asking something that maybe it's silly, maybe it's not like, you know, maybe there is no dichotomy and it no, can be no, both, I, but I'm just asking from your experience. I understand the question and I think, I think in everyday life, we have to perform ourselves in, in such a, a limited frame because of uh, social expectations and social uh, agreements um, and on stage we can we can do this work uh, in a much more ex in an extended way and then it will be accepted you know what I mean? That I, I mean that the stage allows you to explore yourself in, in ways that, uh, that are not acceptable on the street. Mm. And, and then you can take whatever content that you practice in your everyday life and, and try it in, more radical or extreme way in the artistic process. 
So, so um, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think about it because, like, there is definitely, like, every time you walk on stage, there is like a, you know, there's a certain uh, line, you know, like you're out and then like you do the first step and you're in, you know, may, may, sometimes maybe there's a little bit more fade with the light, whatever, but like the, the moment you are, you know, like that's it, I'm visible, there is a certain elemental thing that changes with the perception of yourself and the perception of of the others. And, and I feel that there is a certain uh, power in it. You know, it's, uh, you know, I can feel it also just when I'm teaching and everybody suddenly look at me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I always struggle more in the realm of performance to give, you know, like um, to really be there sharing something. When I teach, I know that, okay, you watch me, but I deliver something with my voice, with my ideas that is useful for you. And you can, you know, there's, like, there's a clear utilitarian value but when I watch you, uh, but when I perform for you, like I have a subjective idea about something which is being manifested in a very abstract way and you have millions of ways to interpret it. So I don't even know if I'm giving you something that has any value for you. And I always struggle with that, you know, and, and I feel that, that maybe it's more my own struggle than, you know, a built-in problem in performance art. <laughs> I don't and I'm curious yeah. I don't I don't see the difference I think maybe at the moment it's easier for you to be clear with the uh, transmission of your thoughts in a, in a format of of a class uh, using words but if you if you have this the same clarity and the medium is movement, abstract movement, or non, uh, not abstract movement. Um, on stage, it will it will pass through. That's that's my my assumption that if you um, if you master the tool, and you're clear with with your intention, it works. Yeah, maybe it's really that, you know, like if I compare the amount of hours that I have on, you know, acting as a teacher than acting as a choreographer, it's really like, a, you know, like a comparing a, a, a black belt understanding to a white, to a beginner. So, so yeah, because for me, like whenever I created work and, and performed of works of others, I always felt that there is like, yeah, I've never, I've never participated in any way doing a masterpiece, you know, so or being part of something that you see like, wow, this is really like a powerful piece of art that has like an impact. Yeah. I, but I've seen, I've seen art like that and you know, but it's, it's quite rare, I would say, no? Uh, yeah. And <laughs> our yeah. wish is to be a part of, of that and less on the, on all the other kind of <laughs> art, no? That's that's the wish. Yeah, but in a way, you know, like what you said before about this kind of celebrating your celebrating the failures, the, the failure that you might be or that you you have done or mm -hmm. that you you are. Uh, but in a way, I don't know. Like if I think about it a little bit more, like being being something bigger than yourself. So in a way, that uh, you know, like I mean, I I think we both see art as something that has some necessity on a societal level. No. Um. I'm still, I'm still questioning that, or I'm still asking myself, what is the role of art in in society? Yeah, but, for, I'm, yeah. and I'm also questioning, but I, 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 I have an intuition that there is a utility there, and that's my intuition. And I think like maybe, maybe you know, we just have to fail enough in order to, for something to come up, and maybe we will be the one lucky to be part of it, and maybe not. But it's somehow you know like my failure informs you in your creation and you know like you so like i'm still being part of it to some extent yeah. you know by which maybe is maybe not maybe it's not the ideal the ideal position from the point of the ego but it's still like you know like it's a collective effort no um it's a it's a very nice it's a very nice observation 
I didn't think about it like that. But yeah, but maybe because um, I don't feel so much a part of a community, uh, which is creating this collective effort uh, feeling or yeah it can be very competitive yeah. so it's this is something that i want to believe that it's a collective effort and history will say if it is or isn't and if it is successful uh, yeah. effort or not but yeah i don't know yeah. i'm not the most um uh, optimistic person <laughs> <laughs> yeah me neither but <laughs> but uh, yeah no I'm, I'm thinking about it because you know like so many things are like so many things in life are kind of the you know like you know like uh, so many things that we can do are the result of many people who failed in attempting it and then eventually somebody did and now we we have this luxury from technology to to art, to philosophy, and, and I don't know, I'm just thinking that maybe, maybe it's something that, uh, that it's just, it's just how it works, I don't know, but I, yeah, it's definitely not comforting, you know, because who wants to be, <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm just a stepping stone for you doing the, your great art, of course, it sounds very depressive, actually, to me, but, uh, yeah, but I, I, I can, I, I must say that I kind of gave, gave up on the ambition to be the best of anything um, because I felt that it came on the expense of my integrity and in the last couple of years I realized that when I move away from my integrity or from my I don't know I can call it from my center or, no I like the word integrity um, mm. I I really don't enjoy doing it. Then I ask myself, why? Why do I bother? You know, why? It's it's such a difficult profession. Why should I do it if if it's not uh, if I don't believe in what I'm doing? Like a hundred percent. Yeah, fair enough. I am with you on that. And then if and, uh... if I will fail. The, I don't know, like who, who, who is the one to judge if I succeeded or I failed? Is it uh, money <laughs> that, that that's the measure? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm reading now an interesting book that tries to, like the, the author, his name is Ken Wilber, he's trying to, like he has a model to kind of balance the, the empiric objective word and the interior subjective word and and i think that you know that like I, I think that it's important not to exclude any anyone you know like if you're just obsessed with like you know external recognition you know like winning a prize uh, receiving the biggest amount of uh, money you can get appearing on some magazine yeah then maybe you're you're gonna alien alienate yourself from yourself i don't know but but also i think just existing internally with you know kind of you know, you know like i don't know you're just doing crap nobody cares about and you are celebrating it it's also like you know there's a there, it can also be said uh, as somebody who, but yeah i don't know i mean i think i i totally agree with you that i mean we both went through this machine of contemporary dance education that really kind of puts standards of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and there is a certain tyrannical element in it and i think we are both we needed to differentiate ourselves maybe just as you said to to feel our integrity i think it fits so little people this model that dance education proposes it fits so many so, so little people so of course like of course you have to find your own way once you're out you know because if if you're not one of these uh, um the the few that this specific model works for you know yeah definitely that's why I, that's why I, I i know when i when i teach i try to see my role not to like funnel people in a certain direction but more like to kind of spiral them into the ceiling and then they can you know, like 
choose where they want to flow to rather than like you are all sliding into that destination and <laughs> yeah i asked myself so many times why do i teach that or not that and why is this uh, why should the students move like that and not another way? You know, I, I was, I started to, to get so confused with, uh, what is the, what is the objective that it, it made me to step away from teaching for a while. And now when I'm teaching, Again, it's, um, I come to it from a much more um, connected place, you know, I'm, I, it's, I, or maybe not trying to be systematic, just saying, okay, right now I'm interested in that. I invite you to try it out, you know, and take it to your, practice or not or but uh, yeah yeah you know it's it's difficult to like the the moment your 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 consciousness has been exposed to postmodern thinking it's hard to just ignore it and say no 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 my interpretation is objective it's very, yeah <laughs> it's hard uh, to step back but uh, but in a way there is also a trap there you know because when you're acting as a as a teacher and you're interacting with students you can only see the empiric you know, like, and like commenting on the student's interior experience, you know, it's just like, you're just inter interpreting what is going on there. And, and sometimes I feel like that's, that's really problematic by itself. Like to tell to somebody, yeah, like you should feel more like, you know, like, how do I know what they actually feel like? So, so I, I, f I find myself like as a teacher, I, I am trapped with like looking at some like empirical objective actions mm -hmm. that I have to comment on. And then I, of course I need to start creating some values of like why this and not that. So it's really hard to not, like this trap is very challenging conceptually and also practically. Yeah, how, how do you frame or not frame, how do you um, kind of create the right skeleton on which they can um, layer themselves you know yeah i understand you fully i i find it like that i i'm like yeah it's ve like the moment you want to systemize it that you know that you can kind of reproduce it that you know like what you're doing then you know way you're like shifting away from the to the actual ability to do it but then you're always trapping this in 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 the in the border between like you know uh certainty and and novelty like i don't know I, that's how i feel when i'm teaching like many yeah, there are certain things i've done for so many hours that i kind of know yeah if i do this they get this but then i feel like if i do it like what am i teaching them it's like yeah, what is the, what is actually the learning that is happening i don't know it's complicated yeah and this is very much connected to my uh to my uh, current practice you know, to constantly ask yourself, what is it now? You know, never assume that you know, even if you know that if you will do this, you will get that. Question it again, because maybe it's not uh, relevant anymore. Maybe mm. time has time changed and things are not relevant anymore and you have to update yourself. Totally. Hey, before I jump into hearing about the new project, mm -hmm. I, I do want to kind of dive a little bit into the, your, the, 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 your previous creation, the Arama mm -hmm. that you made. Uh, maybe you can tell us, the audience, shortly, like what, what, was, what were you researching in your last choreographic project? Well, um in diorama stories because updated to be diorama stories so. <laughs> <laughs> um, i was interested in the gap between the consumed image images that we uh, we see every day 
on social media, in the news, uh, but mostly social media. And the, the real life experience. So... Um, of the images, you mean? Of the event that was uh, documented into an image or mm. okay. manipulated into an image. Um, yeah, so I found a kind of choreographic practice of uh, creating images on stage and then posting them live on uh, as stories on Instagram. And by doing that, I was uh, I was creating two different narratives. So there is the narrative of the performance that you experience live in the theater and the one you can experience uh, on Instagram. Uh. Yeah, I, I remember one thing that happened is that, that like uh, that you that you were really ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> and that relates to the eruption of COVID is how the whole, like you've been like really obsessed with like looking at what does it mean to experience dance through a computer? Yeah. Like li what does it mean to experience like experience live performances through the computer? And then like COVID hit the dance world and suddenly everybody panicked to like, how can we stream yeah. our performances? <laughs> yeah, and I was so, so pissed at the time, you know, I was, <laughs> it really made me angry because suddenly everyone became like choreographers for screen and performers for the screen. And no one waited to ask, what does it mean? No one stopped and, and, and checked what it means to... Um, uh, I, I, I cut my, my thread of thought. What yeah. does it mean to, you mean to, to actually... To, to translate what you would have done in a live situation to the screen because it's not the same medium and it doesn't and it doesn't translate so easily no, I mean, no you really have to say that's why <laughs> that's why most of the time it was just like a horror show on your on your screen <laughs> yeah it's i don't know most of the time it's just boring you know yeah exactly. and i got to a point maybe because i was so obsessed with this for so long i mean i think i'm, I'm dealing with this with the question around uh, the relevance of live performance in the age of uh, internet. Um, I'm busy with that since 2016. So yeah, almost six years. Hmm. And, uh, and it got to a point that when I watch documentation of, of my own performances, I, I get bored. Mm. And it's things that I believe in and, and, and I love, but I, I don't know when it's, when it's not specifically made for, for the screen. And for that, you, you need a lot of knowledge in, in, in film, you know? It's, not in, yeah, it's sure. really not enough, the knowledge that we, we have as uh, dancers and performers or choreographers, creators for stage. It's really not enough. No, I started now like uh, just a bit the f the f the first step of collaborating with a filmmaker, and I'm like, oh my god, like like there it's uh, of course it's like such vast territory to explore that yeah, of course like just assuming that you can translate it is naive, but you know like I think like to some extent like it's not surprising me that someone like you who like you know we we are kind of from the same generation find themselves interested in that topic, and I actually want to dive a little bit more into that because. I mean, I don't know anybody from our generation that does social media with identification with what they're doing. Like, we are all like kind of like, you know, we have our, uh, let's say, uh, internet personality that we feed. And most of the time it's like, for, f to some extent with like, you know, th there is a utility that connects to like promotion and, you know, getting out there, exposing yourself. But... We still have a big separ like separate separation between who we are in real life and this kind of f f fictive character that we we feed. Mm -hmm. 
And younger generation, they don't have it anymore. They're, it's just like one. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe that, that, that there is no hierarchy, that it's clearer the, you know, like real life is real life and social media is just a, a fictional thing. So many people really experience it as real, as, a, as, a, as, a, as like, let's say, tangible tactile reality. And, and I'm really wondering because you've been looking like at the process of the embodied process of generating images, which is something that I feel like it's, so imp- it's such an important thing to explore because we just all the time do it, like this obsessive documentation and, and you know, of like displaying our life through this static image that, that we just all adapted into that reality without even really questioning, like, why the hell are we doing it? You know, like everybody, like all the time, you know, people, including, you know, I sit in my, in my, in my family, like this over-documentation of what is happening and capturing life from moment to moment. What do you think about it? Is, I mean, you, did you do the project because you wanted to criticize it or like, what, what was your, what, what's your totally. look on that? Totally. No, it's, it really came from um, my, my, <laughs> my hatred. No, <laughs> hatred is too, too strong. Word. No, but my anger um, about, about people um, who, who experience so many meaningful events through their phones. You know, and the, this this process that you you just beautifully um, described uh, is flattening the the reality. I find it it makes it flat and superficial. That's my intuition, at least. And can you elaborate? Like, what do you mean by flat and superficial? Like, what what is the Let's say when, when, you, when you talk about this uh, persona that you have online um, that is not, that you don't identify with, why don't you identify with that? Because it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, it's like one dimensional or two dimensional. It's not, it's not. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to be authentic while I do social media. And you cannot be really. Complex. I mean, I feel now it's it's changing because it's it's like a, a living creature that is evolving. Um, so people learn more and more how to find their authentic selves in uh, in this medium. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely not there yet. But I feel that. Um, You hide behind behind the it behind the screen. It's kind of a safe place. You are not uh, as vulnerable and tangible as you are in real life, especially when it has to do with encounter with with other people. Mm. Uh, plus, you you direct or manipulate the situation um, and you filter it in so many ways that it's, it's uh, getting further and further from the actual thing that, uh, that is happening, that is represented in the image. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I found a, a very funny YouTube channel recently. Mm-hmm. I think it's called something like Joey B. Tunes or something. And, and the guy's like, he does a lot of video commenting on people, how they behave on social media. And I've seen like a video that, that there was some uh, model <laughs> that took like, made like a photo shoot <laughs> next to the... Uh, in the funeral of her dad. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> and then like you see, you know, like, you know, like she's kind of modeling behind. You see the the casket where the, where her dead father is, and you know she has some kind of a, a caption. I don't know, like uh, 
the 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 bird has left the <laughs> <laughs> oh my god That's and then you just see her posing uh and uh and yeah but and i mean what was very clear for me from watching your performance and i don't know if like if you have some insight about that like is that you really expose it like live on stage that we can see okay i can watch i can be in the theater i can watch my 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 iphone mm-hmm. uh And I, and I go and I see how you are creating an image in front of my eyes and the image, whatever it could be, like from something very grotesque to something very beautiful. But I see the process of you doing it, mm-hmm. you know, like which, is, which has nothing to do with the end result when it comes to your experience because you're not, you're not the image. You're just like, you're just serving it exactly. for that image. And then I see it in front of me and you really see this alienation happening in front of your eyes. So like, So I'm curious, like, did you have any, like, prof- like what, was, what was, like, did you have any profound discoveries that you took from that project that has some kind of a applicative <laughs> uh, aspect in your life? Because I find it, like, such, like, we are just all sucked in that without any, like, future exit door, no? Yeah, well, I, I wish I, I can say that I found something that I take with me and uh, has changed my behavior uh, radically. Or <laughs> But I just think that it made me like, hyper aware to how I'm uh, presenting myself. Out there in the big internet and uh, and it made me more critical on how others do it mm. um, or i I really see the or i can i I can imagine always the behind the scenes of uh, of the images that I consume. Like, how did they get there? You know, how did they make it? Um, yeah. and, and then all the questions about, about experience, uh, emotions, decision-making, uh, genuinity, authenticity, all this, of course, come up. So do you think like that in the real world there there is authenticity? I don't like this word so much, but i i uh, I agree to use it because uh, uh, it, it does bring a concept that we agree on um, yeah i think I think so I think um I want to believe there is and This is uh, maybe now the, a nice bridge to my next project, <laughs> because uh, as I'm still very busy with, the, with asking what is the relevance of, of live performance and how to bridge or how to uh, no, actually, how to present this gap of the image and the experience. Or if we want to use this word authenticity, so the authentic and the fake. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to purify this concept in the, in the next project. Yeah. Mm. And, and I mean, now it's already been quite a long, but that, but that, uh, I mean, in some, and like some people already, like some, For, for sure some performances are got back into the theaters but do you think that there is any actually um value in presenting thing like presenting live dance but not not in a real space and time but through a screen or you think it's just it was just like a like a compromise of the situation and, and you would and there is no and it's just a failed medium i think it it needs much more investigation i don't think 
we got there yet in understanding how to do it without how to do it in a way that is not documenting something but that's the medium mm. um i personally personally haven't seen anything that was able to to that had this uh sympathy Yeah, in a way, I, I, I'm resisting to it. And, you know, like I also at a certain point, like really didn't want to teach anymore on Zoom and everything like that. In a way, like, I think it's like if the dance world will abandon like corporal relationships. What is it for? Like, <laughs> like wh wh who will, like, we are like, we are lost. No, we are not lost. Like, but, you know, like, but. No, but Matan, we can. In the art world. We, we can, you know, invent a new genre or a new uh, brand of teaching that is uh, teaching dance for tiktok you know <laughs> no i'm not kidding i think but i think i think if you if you are going to um to a dance school and you think there you can get the the skill of dancing for for a screen i'm i'm sorry but It's not working like that. But maybe, uh, maybe we are just dinosaurs, you know? <laughs> maybe we mm. are too old for the, uh, with our concepts. And the, the, uh, the next generation, they, they already have this so embedded in them. Uh, they, they don't need... I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think like, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe my conservative stance will disappear from the world. Uh, because like that's the nature of things but i you know but i think like if i i'm just very skeptical that you can suppress you know biology completely and still function and you know like we have a biological body you know even if it's full of history and social construct inside of it and you know like and and you know i don't know when i'm working with young dancers i see like you know like It doesn't matter what's your history. Somebody is touching your skin, you know, like something is happening there. Yeah. You know, you, ca you cannot, you know, like it's just not, uh, it's irreplaceable. It's like, um, and, and I would even argue that it's like a um, uh, biological, psychological necessity. I don't know. So I, 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 don't, I don't know if, if to say we are dinosaurs and it's like, a, I think like it's something worth preserving. Yeah, but... but we have to ask what is it for then what is it for i understand what it does i experienced it oh, boy oh boy have i experienced that but what is the relevance of it for the, the next generation maybe it's irrelevant i you know i'm saying it knowing the answer but Knowing that, I also know that I don't know hmm. that um, my parents also thought they knew things that I am uh, convinced that I know better. And that's also the natural way of things. So... But do you, but, do, but, but don't you, I don't know. I mean, me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm now reaching slowly my 40s and and i see a lot of things that you know that my parents told me that i was resisting and that now i'm like yeah actually it makes a lot of sense so it's like so i do see that you know certain smart ideas they keep going from one generation to another and certain ideas that are not smart they they wash away or sometimes you know like new bad ideas just take over like you know but 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 yeah like i i don't see myself as like a completely I'm, I'm not alienated from my parents. At least that's how I feel. No. At least on the, on the legacy of ideas and concepts and values. Like, there's difference, but there's also a lot of similarity. Yeah, but, but then you... again, you don't know which concepts or which ideas or which, uh, yeah, uh, values will, are the, what you call smart ones and which are not. Yeah. I, I want to keep myself humble and adaptable 
And how do you do that? I, I like, practice it every day, really. I practice it all the time. In front of my daughter and in my artistic um, development. And it's, I think, it's channeling my frustration and uh, the things that I don't understand or anger into saying maybe there is truth in that that I can't see right now. Maybe I will never be able to see that. And uh, it's, it's just, it makes it a, a bit easier. Sometimes I cannot do it, huh? but, mm. but I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, we have different personalities. I feel that I, I have to have friction with things in order to understand myself. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly <laughs> bat battling. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love yeah, yeah. watching that from, from the outside. <laughs> it can be very entertaining sometimes. <laughs> look, to some degree, the fact that we are speaking now is kind of the result of mm -hmm. that. So, and, and, um, yeah, but I, yeah, I feel, yeah. There, it, I just don't want to abandon yet the notion that there is something that binds human together. That's maybe the, the main thing that I'm saying. Yeah, everything is up to interpretation. And, you know, like what is true for me, maybe is not true for you. And, you know, and maybe I don't understand social media. And for some people, it's like they, it's really like a genuine expression of who they are. Maybe. Uh, but I do feel that there are some things that binds us together and that there are uh, a, a mixture of our uh, evolutionary history and and this this kind of uh, international culture that is slowly uh, expanding so that people from different places in the world start to share more and more common values so it's a very slow process but so I'm not willing to give up on that yet and to say, yeah, whatever I think is true, maybe it's just like, could be thrown away. But I don't know, I think it's also like the process of, of being a parent. Like I, I ask myself constantly, like uh, I'm confronted with it. I, and I guess you are also with like, okay, why, sh why do I tell my kids no for this thing and yes for that thing? You know, it's, like, it's every moment you have to confront with yeah. like, no. Am I being tyrannic or am I being a benevolent, good father? <laughs> it's, yeah. Allowing themselves and, to be the best selves they can be without my footprint somehow. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, I think it's just inevitable. They are so yeah, much first. connected to us. Uh, and actually, you know, like it's a good bridge to like uh, talk to you because I'm, I'm curious, like I've read the concept of your new project uh, rehearsal of birthing and dying am i saying did rehearsal I say for for birthing and dying yeah yeah okay sorry for that and uh, and and yeah i read it and it, it it provoked my curiosity and 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 i wanted to ask you yeah first maybe again give us a short kind of preview like what are you doing in the studio what what are you what is what are you researching um so I'm still working with, the, as I said before, with the gap between the image and the experience. And um, in, this, in this project, uh, when I say image, I'm talking about uh, still, still position, still image. Uh, um, and at the moment, we are busy with uh, finding the, a state of performativity that is um, it's we we're try we are trying to open the realm of possibilities that is us. So um, we try to express the stream of consciousness starting or being inspired from these extreme life events which are um, 
being born, giving birth, and dying. Um, I have experienced um, in a very short time the birth of my daughter and the death, death of my father. And uh, I, when, when I heard my father's moaning over the phone in his last hours, it really made me identify somehow with the state of, of the state of, of his mind that um, connects you so much to the present moment. And I think it has to do with the fact that you are, first of all, with, with the fact that you are dealing with, uh, with life, with, the, with life in, in, its, in all its meaning. Uh, but also it's um, because the body is in such a, such an extreme situation of, of uh, s trying to survive every single moment. Um, you have to be extremely focused on, on every micro movement, every step in the, br in the breath. And uh, yeah, and it, it puts you in a very strong place of uh, transcendency. Um, and, in, in, and in the concept, I also read that you are, to some degree, linking those experiences also to like your, your practice with psychedelics, no? Yeah, yeah. So, so what, is this common, what, what is the common ground for you there? Um, I, I think the, the main thing is the non-linearity. Um, the fact that um, there is not a, a chronolo chronology. Um, there is no intellect. Um, and there is no sense of time. I think this binds everything together. I think these are the, the main characteristics that, that make these experiences um, kind of similar. Mm. Um, and this leads to, to the letting go of the ego, letting go of uh, the illusion of authorship, the attachment to materiality, um, the attempt to, to give words to the experience. You know, it's interesting because uh, I was thinking, and it also relates to the book I'm reading by this awesome author, yeah. uh, that like, I mean, I, I haven't gave birth and I didn't mourn my parents. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it, not talking from experience. But, uh, but I could relate to it in kind of my own few experiences with psychedelics that, that sometimes you, like, you get to this... Like, there was two profound mem moments that I can remember. One that I really kind of my consciousness... consciousness drop down into something very animalistic mm -hmm. you know and my and 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 i think that like, like it's something that i can relate f or can connect to stories i heard about different women who gave birth and they f and they really kind of they stopped being themselves you know? and they and they became an animal that kind of you know just 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 give birth not a person that has an ideas about birthing and concept and technique just an animal that and and there is something very interesting about this state but it's also like um like i it feels for me more like kind of going downwards rather than like transcending 
I don't know if you, I, I don't remember like, I mean, we talked about your birth, but I yeah. don't remember like how, how was it for you, but, and, and the other experience that I had was moment of like really transcendency that I could really go into a state where I feel the interconnectedness of things. So I'm not just present in every moment in this kind of animalistic survival mode that needs to, you know, that the self needs to survive, but in moments that like, okay, the, the self is still, is still here, but it dissolved into this kind of interconnected web of life. And, and, I, and, I, and I can assume that what you are aiming for is, I don't know, are you aiming for one or the other? Or like, what is the search? I, I think as things are not um, so um, binary and linear in this state, you can totally bounce between and find the spectrum in mm. between. And I think both exist at the same time also. Um, yeah, and I don't know, you know, I, you can really, you can feel this connectedness to everything and to feel yourself um, taking into like the, the smallest particles and, uh, and be one with the universe. But the same feeling, the same um, intensity can be also when you observe, um, I don't know, an ant on the grass trying to pick up a, a, a grain. So what I'm trying to say is that you can be so focused in like hyper, hyper resolution with, with, with a very, very small thing and this would be as intense as when you feel like, oh, wow, I understand the universe now. I am, I am it and, this, and it is me. Mm. So it's this feeling of, uh, I don't know if it will <laughs> come through the podcast, this, the, the, the audio, but it's like this, <gasps> you know, that you really like, you feel alive. You feel alive. And this is what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for as an experience in this project and generally in life to have this like <gasps> moments, mm -hmm. this expansion. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think now when I ask your question, maybe, you know, it's already revealing that we have very different mind <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and i'm i'm very yeah i'm i'm very i have a, a for the good and the bad the need to to, to have clear boundaries between things mm -hmm. and then it's also like when it comes to ideas and 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 for me even though i i, I agree with you that it, there is nothing linear about that i could feel the shift between those different states and one, I think I can provoke it very easily. The, the one about the, the animal. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Uh, uh, you know, just go and... Uh, I don't know, take a car and drive against the traffic, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's, that is so animalistic. <laughs> Driving no, no, but a the car. State, <laughs> but this, you know, the state of like you are in a immediate danger, and you have to, yeah, you know, you, yeah, you're yeah. you're just in the present, and you maybe you know it's not the best example. You know, I can give it. You know, like participate, spar, make a boxing sparring when you're not that experienced in boxing. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be there, like, oh my god, like I'm just uh, uh, extremely overwhelmed, and and like I'm just. I, the, the word disappears because I'm in the experience mm -hmm. and there's nothing beside the experience. There's no me, there's no you, there's just this moment. But I think that it's like, but the other thing, like the moment that I'm like, I remember myself sitting there in the ceremony and like breathing with closed eyes and just like seeing how the, the voices of the other people, you know, there's no, there's no separateness between me and the people around me. It's just all connected. 
this I'm so far from being able to, you know, to provoke to myself. And, I, and I'm really curious, like, what would you dig there in the project? Because I think that's in a way like a, like kind of a very pre- precious thing to discover. Yeah. yeah I, I am looking for the access uh, to, to this state. Um, I, I assume this is the, my assumption, this is where this work came from, that these extreme live events are, are good doors for that. Um, and the method that we are using so far is um, I found two scripts uh, of meditation. One is uh, the eight stages of death. It's a, a Tibetan Buddhist meditation. And the other one um, is, uh, of, is about being born, experiencing your own birth. Not what you remember of, but a, a new kind of birth. And, and they're both not uh, trying to, 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 they're not trying to make this comfortable or uncomfortable. It's just what it is. Um, and it, it provokes very um, uncomfortable or hard content that come up, um, but also it, it's, it, it gives some kind of a relief, you know, this... Um, let's say, on the death meditation um, to you relieve yourself from, from pain and you let go of the material body. Um, there are many beautiful things about that. And being born, which is can be can be seen or intuitively you think uh, you think about birth and life and all these positive connotations come but it, it's like the first time you experience cold first time you experience gravity first time you experience you, you experience um, touch of, an, of another person that can be very overwhelming and not always comfortable. So, yeah. So these are, are our starting points and from there we we look for new versions of ourselves Hmm. And and one thing that I uh, that kind of caught my attention when when reading the concept and thinking about what you're attempting to do is that uh, yeah you you wrote like yeah that the 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 practice attempts to break break through hierarchies chronologies development and to some extent also to be able to uh, yeah look at like like the the um, cul- like the the cultural norms around these uh, um, moments of birth and death mm-hmm. and like and how how they are uh, maybe represented in our bodies and and yeah and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm, I'm very curious like to to hear like uh, 
did you have experiences that you could really dance and really dissociate yourself from this almost automatic pattern of the mind of you know evaluating referencing categorizing um i don't i don't think i i should do that i think i acknowledge all the things that you mentioned and then i i exist in them or outside of them of course i always have the reference point to what i know but when i when i recognize my pattern i can break it or i can comment on it i can criticize it or i can exist in it but first i need to recognize it and so i i don't really i did have moments of a, a trance-like feeling or transcendency in performance, yes. When I felt like, wow, this was not me dancing. It, mm. um, which is, it's the best thing. <laughs> it's, mm. it's almost orgasmic. Mm. Like, yeah. I really want to visit these places more often, but, but it's, not, it's not necessarily the point because I don't, I don't try to erase all the knowledge that I have. Um, but I try to expand it or to, to see it and choose what I do with it and and I think these choices are enriching the experience, my experience as a, as a performer, but also, and therefore, the experience of the viewer. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I was, I was being pulled also to think about like, you know, that in a way, it also in a way connects to the previous uh, project because like the moment what you're doing is made for consumption of others it changes your relationship to it and then if i'm if i'm now let's say performing the the first class in boxing and i'm overwhelmed by the situation just the fact that i know that i'm being watched already changes the 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 quality and the intensity of my ability to be overwhelmed <laughs> by that experience because it's already manufactured and I think that one thing that maybe, and maybe 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 is not present in 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 the moment you are born and giving birth, and hopefully when you're gonna die, is that uh, you're not manufacturing it for something else. It's just this. Maybe this is authenticity, and 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 yeah, and and for me, like for me, it it it, it sounds like very. Uh, I cannot figure it out yet like for myself what what is it like those states can can they really can the act of of attempting to go there um is is not part of the of manufacturing them i you know because because yeah i think like you know it's very like there there, there is something there that changes, which I, it's not obvious for me. I mean, when I did, when I did the, 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 those ceremonies with the psychedelics, there, was peop there were people around me and they were part of my experience, but we had a different agreement. Then if I will tell them, look, I'm going to take this thing and you're going to watch me. <laughs> yeah. And in a way, it's not so easy to generate this kind of agreement even though maybe on a very, very, very fundamental level, that's the agreement between a performer and, 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 and the viewer, but it's not very easy nowadays to generate such agreement. No, we are here together. We are sharing an experience. It really becomes very often like, you are showing us something and we sit on the side and watch okay, you. Okay, no problem. I'm not trying to, mm. to reinvent um, the theatrical situation. 
but using the theatrical devices, I can talk about this shared experience. Mm. Or I can... I can uh, create such an experience with my dancers that you will feel a part of it. And that's what I'm interested in. Mm. So, so like to pull, to, so in a way to do create some kind of a pull to, yeah, I, you know, that's something I wonder because like if I just refer to some, you know, when I was younger, I was doing a lot of meditation and then I was practicing in a specific tradition of this uh, uh, Gwenka Vipassana tradition. And, and, in, and when I was uh, living in a center, I read a lot of, li of Buddhist literature and there was like kind of a very typical uh, stories that ke kept popping up about the Buddha, which maybe they're fictional, maybe, they are, maybe it, it is uh, historical, I don't know. But that, uh, and, and like the, the story goes like this, you know, like the Buddha goes somewhere, there is somebody who is for some reason is pissed about the Buddha and doesn't like the Buddha. <laughs> mainly because they stole all their students or something like this. So they, they have a reason why to be angry on the Buddha. And then they want to confront and kill the Buddha. But then when they arrive to kill the Buddha, you know, like his presence is so, and his, his, you know, his mind, his consciousness is so vastly up, uh, uh, up there, connected, that they cannot hate him. They cannot be in the moment. They cannot murder him. They dissolve into empathy, and sometimes just by the presence of the Buddha, they transcend their own minds. And and it's a very nice story. And and I and for me, the question is like, you know, can it can we do it to ourselves? Can I pull you up towards me by going somewhere, and you are just witnessing it? Can there be a can me being in the this interconnectedness state can actually invite you for closer to me? And allow you, you know to to kind of break the illusions of the uh, alienation between us, which is a, which is maybe kind of in for me when I read the concept, mm -hmm. that's kind of what came to me like, mm, wow, that's a beautiful attempt. I I don't know if you agree with what I'm proposing. And yeah, I I just you. don't agree with the idea of trying to pull someone to you. I'm not trying to pull someone to me. I'm trying to by I'm trying to find the the connectivity of myself with myself and with the universe and i want to encourage you to do the same so let's say if we talked before in the beginning about the the, the objectivity the the ob yeah the objectivity that's my objective um that's that's yeah, no, what I, I propose I, it's a it's a more precise uh va variation what you're saying because i i don't think that it's like a you know it's not a manipulative action look I'm i know a, i know I'm, i know you did i'm the buddha come to me uh, <laughs> no but uh, i like but i like, like it that, is... that uh, like by finding your and i will use this buddhistic term uh, inner radiance you spread your light to others and the others are infected by it or affected by it yeah which is to some degree you know like it's like the like that's inspiration oh i don't know, like sometimes you know i can sit in like i don't know i see somebody dancing in a way that i find very beautiful and you know it just like brah, it just like it pulls me towards them it's not that the person is actively like tempting me to follow them but there is a certain transcendent light that that invites me to follow and that's maybe on a on a physical level and and some of the beauty that i see is not separated from where the person uh, is and in, in their like where their the consciousness of the person is because i i i watch i watch them dancing but part of the dancing is their consciousness it's not just the physical body yeah and, exactly. and yeah that's kind of what i'm and 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 I can add and to what, that so, that um, yeah. one of my uh, choreographic interest is how to how to produce or create this uh, empathy. Hmm. Uh, 
in a very direct way, you know, I'm not, it's not a byproduct of something. It is the thing for me. And the empathy, you say the empathy of the person who is uh, transcending their mind or the empathy of the observer? Like you want to generate empathy of, of, of observation or the, what do you mean? From the audience to the performance. So how to make the audience experience empathy? Yeah. And, do, and what have you discovered so far? Because I'm the most cynical <laughs> audience member you can have, so. Um, uh, I'm... I really think, first of all, I really think that uh, when, when you don't put so much um, uh, the spotlight on the intellect and you use more somatic and uh, sensorial elements, you're halfway there mm. and yeah and then the what i said before the clarity and mastering the tool mm. yeah that would be something to worth with yeah i don't know i'm i'm definitely not there yet but but th this is my uh lifelong journey mm. No, but it's a worth a while, you know, like even, even if we don't know how to get there, it's worth a while searching for it because I think that, and you know, maybe again, it's connects to the, the, the previous theme of this, of social media and like consuming kind of fragmented moments of other people's life that are being staged to provoke certain emotion. I feel that like empathy is like really not a common thing to witness anymore, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, how do you feel? But like, definitely not in those virtual spaces. Yeah, well, I, I was busy with these virtual spaces for so long, I, I need a break from it. And now I'm really back in the body. Like in this project, it's really about, about the, the body, the, consciousness the mind the experience the connectivity the physical connectivity and the spiritual connectivity all the things that i don't find an answer to on devices hmm. and and how much was your your own process of giving birth kind of driving you into that realms mm, i don't see it as a like a turning point i see it as a um, like a step i had to go through and i was um I was looking forward to giving birth when I was pregnant. Uh, I know many women, they are really scared of this moment. And I was really excited about it. I was excited about experiencing strong pain, not from a masochistic place, but really from like, I, I think I like contemporary life, make make me so numb i really want to experience strong emotions and strong sensations and i was looking forward to this um, to see how i will deal with it and how, how it's going to be so and yeah, I, I never experienced such intense uh, connection and disconnection to my body because at one moment I, I felt like it's, uh, it's going on its own, you know, that I have no control over it. And I, I'm, in retrospective, I'm proud of myself for allowing this... Um, for allowing myself to to let go of the control and mm -hmm. this is maybe the connectivity to 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 the ancestral knowledge that my body carries mm -hmm. 
and that I trusted it. Um, and this allowed me to, on one hand, to be really focused and present, on the other hand, to have this um, um, to get out to 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 step out of my body. Mm. Uh, kind of the catharsis. Yeah. You mean. Mm. So. Yeah, you know, like I I hear it, and you know, I. Uh, I'm going to say something, maybe I'm going to piss some people. <laughs> but yeah, like for me, the fact that we are living in a culture that kind of demonizes motherhood to some extent, or like that kind of, <laughs> that, that doesn't promote giving birth as something which is like, to some degree noble. <laughs> you know, like, and as if it's like, and as if, as if, as if reproduction is somehow lower yeah. Rather than being part of the productive world, which is in a way kind of a contradiction because it comes from people who are mainly will identify it most of the time as feminists, as kind of a- attempting to 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 see the value of women in the world and 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 for me like it's just like so weird. Why would you want to devalue reproduction? Maybe it's an answer kind of to years of you know like that women had mostly reproductive roles and then okay we want to balance it but i don't see the suppression of it as anything that is long-term balancing because first like what you just said i think that it has so much power on the individual like okay i'm going to go through something which i've never went before which has like connection to my you know to from me up to the you know like first humans like there is an there is a red thread mm-hmm. <laughs> there it's not going to be easy and it's going to be an embodied experience and i'm going to confront it with courage that's by itself it's already like man i wish i could go through something like ah, that but <laughs> so, you're a man you cannot go through that <laughs> yeah you know i can have a headache <laughs> and experience similar things and like. take a pill but uh, <laughs> 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 no but that's the thing like you know like it's a, it's a it's almost as if yeah like it for me, it's just something that has so much, uh, and I've, you know, I've been present in the birth of my children, and I've seen my wife, and and for me, there was like something so uh, powerful in it, and so emotional, and so, and to some extent, you know, it's so powerful that you know, just witnessing it, you know, I was, you know, every when my kids came out, I was crying, I was just melting there, you know, so like, so maybe you know, like the, the whole state pulled me into that, you know, you cannot be indifferent <laughs> when you're witnessing the birth of your children so i don't know for me it's very something to celebrate rather than you know kind of i mean maybe uh, maybe in my immediate environment i don't feel it so much but i i di- i i do i did hear women looking at this as if like if i'm gonna be a mother i'm like reducing my my being into this reproductive role which i'm much I have much more value than wasting time doing that mm. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I feel that um, the current trend of, of self-fulfillment um, it does not include the work that, uh, of, of, uh, of parenting, which is, which is work, it's like a it, it's work it's you can you can trans, totally translate it to money if money is the is the uh, scale is the measuring device you can totally translate it to money but um, you mean think, that it's labor yeah yeah 24 7 yeah Night and, but night. <laughs> but it used it used it used to be valued. It, a woman used to see herself um, um, self uh, fulfilled only by raising kids, and I struggle with that every day because you know in our professions or at least in my way of of working i i can have a lot of work and then i have 
no work for some weeks. And in this uh, no work time, now it's full of work. Like there is so many things I have to do around the house and um, I, I can spend more time with my daughter and I can really invest in connecting with her, which is for me as creative, as fulfilling, as satisfying as being in the studio and creating dance. You know? Yeah, I'm. I'm one. Of, yeah, I'm. I'm with you. And you know, I'm. I'm not trying to say you know that like we that I have any wish to restore some patriarchal order. I know. I'm just saying. I'm very. I'm very. I feel very lucky to be born as a man in the in the 21st century that I can also be part of the process of uh, bringing up my children and, and you know and educating them and being present. Uh, but yeah, I, I just feel like it's not something to yeah like to to devalue. It's like it's. Uh, it's quite uh, the contrary. Yeah, yeah, but I I must say that I'm I'm struggling with uh, letting letting go of this uh, social contemporary social norm of of you mean of devaluing fulfillment of fulfillment and devaluating uh, being a mother. So I I I tell to myself often. So that's it. Am I reduced to that? But it's not a reduction, it's an expansion. And I remember when, because I, I had to kind of convince my partner to, <laughs> to get a child. And, and for him, it was, uh, it was really hard to, to, to accept the fact that you will have to uh, give up, uh, air quotes, um mm. on um on his time to to take care of a child mm. and i i my um my argument was always but this is not giving up on something this is gaining something and now i'm trying to remind myself that yeah, I mean, you know, if I if I try to say it in a poetic way, so it's like, you know, to some extent, giving birth is the death of the contemporary independent woman because, you know, now you have to confront with the fact that, you know, you have to breastfeed or whatever, you know. And, and yeah, maybe you can completely, you know, subverse the role and just say like, from the moment I give birth, I just go back to my career and, and the man can take everything. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't see any... Uh, nobility in it i think it, of course there is there is something beautiful about sharing this process and and i think that it's really up to ne the negotiation of every couple to see like uh, who is capable competent and motivated to do what um but yeah and yeah look and I'm, I'm also there sometimes you know like there but yeah i mean i'm i mean my kids are older than your your your, your daughter so maybe i kind of uh went through the process of struggling to let go of the of the individual narcissistic wishes <laughs> yeah. and 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 now i'm just like yeah actually yeah it's much calm not to have this constant obsession about the self and just to to balance it with you know taking care of others and observing other it really just did good for my teaching practice for example you know yeah. But I feel that it's not, also it's not uh, taking away. It's it's not the death of uh, the, how did you say it? In the individual, the independent the indep contemporary woman. No, because I am still very independent. I just um, have no time for bullshit. <laughs> you know, I do what I have to do and what I really want to do, and. I am. Um, I got to know myself in a way more. Um, I don't want to use authentic, but yeah. But I I got to know better the, my authentic self. 
because I don't have time for bullshit and I don't see the point and, and my priorities changed and now when I am doing things just to be cool <laughs> I'm aware of that you know and I'm making a, a choice Okay, so I will take it as a compliment that you spent two hours here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, hey, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, totally. Daphna, yeah, um, I mean, I think we can, you know, there's still many questions that I had in mind to talk to you, but it's, yeah, I will have to invite you again. Yes, I will be um, happy. Uh, yeah, so I, I will link to your website and your social media and, and uh, to enable those who are curious to keep exploring what you're doing and and yeah the moment your performance is up there i will also announce it through my channel so people who got curious to see the work can get in touch with it and yeah thank you very much for for coming thank here. you thank you for the conversation and for helping me articulate myself to myself better also <laughs> <laughs> that's also always nice yeah mm. and good luck with the podcast it's really cool mm. i'm happy for you mm. thank you for being part of it okay ciao, ciao. ciao if you want to see more precious and insightful moments make sure to check our short clips playlist to see longer interviews check out the full episode playlist just below it and to be notified for all future videos Click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. See you on the next episode.